Hello everybody, this is Will, or HexParrot, creator of MineOS. Uh, this video is the first installation of a multi-part series of installing MineOS on FreeBSD. This video is simply to comprehensively document the process, but as far as this video, it is not required to use this video in order to install MineOS on FreeBSD. You can also reference the wiki where I have documented and screenshotted, use the FreeBSD handbook, or install it yourself using the ISO and just reading the prompts. Nothing will be done in this video that couldn't be done post installation and that is also documented in the wiki. So this should, video should be quick and it's simply about the installation of FreeBSD which will be followed by installing, configuring, and getting the MineOS scripts working in the next video. Alright, let's get started. Of course I'm running this in a virtual machine but you'd also be able to run this and it's also recommended to run this onto a bare metal machine. FreeBSD is an outstanding piece of software and having its own dedicated machine would really do you the most good as far as getting your server up and running. Alright, now I've gone ahead and booted off of a FreeBSD 9.1 ISO as we can see here and I'm going to walk you through all the different prompts for which most of them are going to be defaults. So we're going to install. We'd like to use a non-default key mapping since I'm using an English ASCII keyboard. I'm going to choose no. It may be different for you in different languages. Next you want to choose a host name. I'm going to go ahead and choose minos.codemo.com which is a subdomain of an actual domain I own but for the host name it doesn't have to be a domain name you own, doesn't have to be a domain name you even have. You can simply choose minos or server x for all that matters. Okay, uh, there are different system components to install. We're going to remove games but leave lib32 and add system source code. You might also decide to install the porch tree uh, which will shorten the amount of time it takes to update. I'm going to go ahead and leave that out just for right now. But if you do install the ports, then when you update it in a later step, it'll just take less time. Alright, now for partitioning, for simplicity, and because the FreeBSD OS does not use the same file systems that you might be familiar with on Linux, I would recommend giving it an entire drive. This will simplify the installation substantially. So I'm going to choose Guided and have it use the entire disk, which again is not compulsory but recommended in my case. It's recommending a 9.5 gigabytes out of the 10 available. I'll just click finish and commit and then I'm going to wait for all the different things to install. Alright, now once the installation is complete it's going to bring us through the initial configuration which is going to include things like starting daemons, creating the user or creating any users, setting the root password, setting up the NIC, and choosing whether you want to use DHCP or static. Uh, in this case I'm going to also choose to use um, DHCP, but you're welcome to deviate that as you please using static. FreeBSD is going to do a great job of filling in all the gaps, making it a lot easier to do static IP here than probably any other distribution of Linux I've ever used. Alright, and aside from that, let's see here, um, we're going to create a user. Now it's important that when you create this user you're not creating a Minecraft user, but you're just creating a regular standard user, and uh, I'll get more into that as well. Um, while this thing is installing, um, well actually no, I'll just wait till this thing's done, it's almost done. Now one of the things that you're going to notice about FreeBSD is it's going to be largely familiar to anyone who's already used a Unix-like system such as Linux and most of my videos if you've learned from then you're going to be able to transfer that knowledge over here. But unlike Linux, the, uh, FreeBSD is a full operating system rather than just the uh, kernel that Linux is paired with the GNU user land, which is an important distinction when you're using FreeBSD in that this is uh, FreeBSD fully encompasses almost all the pieces of software that's going to be on there. Uh, it uses a completely different compiler and in many times it's not going to have the same commands or the same arguments that Linux based equivalent utilities are going to have. Now despite that learning curve, FreeBSD is going to give you a plethora of amazing enhancements such as 
much stronger, much smaller footprint, as well as uh, overall just feeling a lot better. And if you've ever used a Linux operating system from a Windows operating system, I think you'll know what I mean. All right. So the first thing it's asking you to do is choose a root password. I'll go ahead and do that. All right. Now it's asking me to configure a network interface. The one that's available to me is an Ethernet NIC. I'm going to configure it for IPv4. I am going to use DHCP, but it's not necessary. And then I'm going to leave IPv6 off. All right, on this page, network configuration, it may have already figured it out on its own, but for IPv4 DNS number one, this should be pointing to your router's gateway, or to your gateway, which is likely your router. Is this machine's CMOS clock set to UTC? Most BIOSes are not going to be set to UTC, typically because you change it to your own time zone. In this case, my virtual box is running on UTC, so I will choose yes. This is the preferred way to do it, leaving the hardware on UTC and the software by time zone, but this is also not compulsory. America, United States, choose your own, of course, and Arizona. All right, the system configuration services we want are SSHD, uh, the secure shell daemon, and the NTPD to keep our time clock all on targets. Uh, power D and mouse D, you can feel free to add those if you choose. Adjusting the CPU frequency dynamically may have its benefits, but it also could have its downsides because it's typically for saving heat, saving electricity, but isn't something that you normally have on a server environment. I'll click OK. Do you want to enable crash dumps? I'll say no. And then would you like to add users to the system now? I'm going to say yes. Here where I'm going to add, again, a username named Will, unrelated to MC, to Minecraft. All right, default UID, default group, add Will into other groups. This is very important. For whatever, no matter what username you use, add them to the user Will. Wheel is a group that will allow you to get into the root shell, which you cannot do without being part of the wheel group. All right, and also, I recommend using the sh shell, even though it is possible to get the bash shell. The sh shell is very elegant. Home directory done. No random password. Do not lock, and it's done. Do I want to create another user? No. Uh, we're going to leave the MC user for a later step, uh, both because uh, there are different ways or different considerations for creating the next user, whether or not you're using jails. All right, and once that's done, click Exits. Final modifications, I do not have any. I'll click No, and I will reboot. And once we reboot, it's going to bring us to the login prompt. Once we get to the login prompt, that will be the end of this video. And then my next video will show you how to get all the scripts, Java, Python, Screen, all the different additional system packages onto it and working mine OS. Whoops, I forgot to take out the CD. All right, now it is actually booting off the hard drive. As you can see, it's a verbose boot, allowing you to see all this unnecessary information, but it might be good someday if something ever goes wrong. Uh, FreeBSD has a tendency to give you a lot of extra information, which the FreeBSD community is extraordinary at diagnosing. All right, we'll log in as my normal user, su- hyphen. You can see that works, and it works only because I was part of the wheel group. And that's the end of this video. And I'll see you for the next one, which is about installing MinOS onto FreeBSD. And have a great day.